All right, these doors have been a long time coming. I actually started them last year in December, November, and started to film them, started, I was gonna do them, get them done, and then just stuff happened. So they were, that's been sitting in the can for this long, and I decided to edit it up. I was gonna reshoot it, because I got some better lighting and wanna do some different things, but I thought, no, I've already done it, so I'm just gonna put them together. And I had a friend come over and show me how to do some things, and I just gotta practice and, get better at keeping things in focus, so things are in focus, but this is it, uh, this is the video. Here you go. This video came about because I posted these doors on, and, well, and some chests on Tabletop Crafters Guild, and I had several people ask me how I painted them. But anyway, I'm just gonna go show through. Go, <laughs> can't even talk this morning. I'm just gonna show you how I did this. It's pretty quick as far as most of what I do uh, is concerned. These are just some Wiz, Wiz, Wiz Kids doors. And I'm going to do two different colors just to show uh, a couple options. This is a Vallejo orange brown, and that's what I did the door. The second door is going to be a morphing brown, just any kind of dark medium to dark brown will do. This is a GW Shade Seraphim Sepia, and I'm just gonna do this door, and I'm gonna go liberally on this. I'm not gonna, sometimes I won't go as liberal, but I want this one to be really liberal on the door, because I want the grains to really pop, and for this to settle into all the grains. This is Nuln Oil, and we're gonna do the same on this one. I'm just gonna go very liberal on this door. I want this to be a darker wood, so yeah. I might try to tilt it a little bit so it stays flat, so that way it doesn't all seep to one side and kind of look weird. I mean, it would be shade, shadier in there, so I guess it won't be that bad, but. This is sandstone. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna dry brush this one. This one I'm gonna dry brush with uh, raw sienna. Just put some paint on my brush, remove it. Kinda check it on my finger. And I wanna go side across the grain. I just used antique gold and I like it better than the sandstone. So I'd go antique gold. And don't paint your metal first. I, I spaced it off in the order of how I should do things. So I'm gonna have to touch up the metal when I'm done with this. That's okay. Yeah, I like antique gold better. When I painted these originally, I didn't write down the process, so I'm trying to just remember what I did. Because a lot of times I'll start painting and uh, just things work out and then I don't always remember what combination. I should probably write down my recipes better because when I go to repeat them or film them, I guess I guess I could just film them and back that. But I like to set that better. So what I'll just do on this side is I'm not going to go back through and fix the sandstone. I'm just going to go and just do this over top of it. So it'll be a little bit different, but that's okay. So I guess if you want to do one extra step, having the sandstone underneath it does make it pop a little bit more. This is raw sienna. I don't want a lot of my brush when I do this. And like I said this before, but like I did before, just make sure that you go across the grain. Okay, I'm going back to antique gold to do a real fine highlight of this or a real fine dry brush. I'm gonna remove most of my paint off of it. I'm not trying to bring it up too high, but just high enough that we can tell that there's a difference. Now one of the things you can do if you're doing this process and this wood is outside and it's getting sunlight, you can do a light gray now and show that the patina of the sun is actually changing the color. I would do this 
step, even if I was going to do it outdoors, just because you, I like, I like to do the natural colors of woods before I show the patina of gray. So if this was outside, I would now do gray, but because it's inside and not receiving sunlight, I'm not going to do the gray that uh, the sunlight would do uh, to a to wood normally, like on a barn or something like that. And not going to show that type of that style of patina. This is lead belcher. Now I'm just going to paint all the middle parts of this before I go any further. I believe this is the process that I, I did on the previous ones. This is known oil, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the metal, and then I'm going to lightly go around the edges, just to where the wood and the metal hit, just to give that dark crease right there. And I'm going to hit all that. And I want to make sure it pools up around the, the at least these large rivets. That way it has a good effect once it's all said and done and dried. This is a contrast color, it's Griffon Orange. And what I do with this is I kind of treat it like rust and I'll just hit areas like this right below where it might pull rust and things like that. And the other thing I like to do with it as well is I'll just come in here below that, give it an orange tint here and there just to kind of give it more color, more depth, and to show that maybe some of the rust is bleeding into the wood a little bit. This color is lead belcher and what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go through and highlight the top of like the rivets and things like that to where it makes it pop, makes it look like the light is shining down from above. And just do it on areas where if the light was coming from above it would hit first and leave the bottom still dark. That way there's some more contrast to it. Now I'm going to take silver and kind of do the same thing, not as dramatic and just hit little things here and there with silver. I mean, you don't have to go these many steps, but sometimes it's just fun too, just to make things pop from a distance a little bit more. You don't have to do it on every rivet. You don't have to do it on every piece. The doors are pretty much done. I'm just taking a medium gray now, and I'm just gonna apply it to the stonework. Just paint all the stonework up. Then I'll apply a wash to it, or a glaze, or a shade, or whatever you wanna call it. This is known oil, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna apply a heavy wash or shade over all of this, all the gray, and then let it dry and go from there. All right, I'm gonna start the dry brush process. This is a light gray, and I'm just gonna be really well, stingy with it. I'm just gonna get a lot of it off my brush before I start to apply it. I'm kind of bypassing one step. Sometimes I'll go with the, the same gray that I painted this with, but I'm gonna bypass that step. And I'm gonna do it from the top down when I, when I dry brush this. And just gonna bring up the edges, and then I'm gonna apply some more shades. But I'm just gonna do this, bring up all the edges. I don't wanna have it too light, because I still want this to kind of be a dark dungeon, but I also want it to be, I want it to pop from a distance. And as the paint gets removed, I just press down harder. And the less paint you have, I think the it's harder to tell that's a dry brush. And plus stone works really well for dry brushing. This is Beltan Green. All I'm gonna do on this is I wanna go on the bottom of the brick to where it looks like, you know, just organics and things settled where moisture, or just I'll probably just do where it looks good. But what this does is it helps darken the bottom of the brick. And when I darken the bottom of the brick, it makes the top of it stand out a little bit better. And also I'll just throw some in the crease to darken up the crease as well. Uh, might actually throw some on the on the door too, here and there, just to help darken it up. And then after this, I'll use Druchy Violet. I just think it adds more when we have organics or things, maybe fungus or whatever growing. I think it adds more flavor to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and do all that, and when it dries, I'll move on to the violet. That's a wrap on the doors. I'll usually add like Juju Violet and things like that. I have a lot more videos that are older uh, of the row house where I did a lot of brick. Also on the row house, I did a lot of wood. So if you want to see other things on how to do wood, the row house has a lot. Uh, the Tory has a lot. There's a few things I've done a lot of wood. It's the same, basically the same thing. 
just kind of find some colors, do some dry brushing. And if it's outside, add the gray at the end like I talked about. But And then just I have the light source coming down just to add, add it to where it pops more. That's pretty much it. Uh, really quick, really simple. That's all. That's, that's pretty much it. But I hope to get back into filming again. There's reasons why. I took a, a break. And it is what it is. Uh, no excuses. Just hopefully get back into it. I am going to change things up a little bit. I'm not going to build as much as I did. I'm going, I have a bunch of models or terrain that I haven't gotten to. They're just sitting there uh, unassembled. So I'm going to assemble those, I'm going to paint those, and I'm going to show how I paint those. Just because otherwise I'll never, uh, if I don't put them in video, I'll always be just doing something else. and I'll never have a chance to get terrain done for, for the games that I play. So I have like Warcry terrain, I have Kill Team terrain, I have other terrain, and then I'm also... I don't know what happened to me, but I bought printers. I have a uh, filament printer that I'm printing things, some things up, so I'm gonna start painting some of those uh, prefab terrain. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for a while. There's a lot of videos out there. There's a lot of creators out there that build stuff. I have some old things, old videos where I build stuff, uh, but I'm going to paint uh, some pre-made terrain and some kits, and that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next little while. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you enjoy the video, obviously, you know, subscribe and show some support uh, i appreciate it and tell your friends you have a good night uh take care of your family take care of everybody in your in your life take care of yourself enjoy the hobby and have a good time doing it uh for whatever reason you do it for and i'm also playing a lot of dnd &D, and that's taking my time too i got back into that a friend of mine got me back into it and his name is scooter so if you want to blame anybody you can blame him anyway just kidding uh y'all yeah, have a good one take it easy man See ya. Peace out. Peace.